welcome to Pegging Coffee Talk. Here are your hosts, Lady Alba and Lord Knight. Do you think we attribute too much bad behavior to other things? Yes. Okay. So the question becomes, I guess, why can't somebody just be a bad person? I have no idea. Well, give me examples of what you're running into. Well, when you hear some of the stuff, news reports and stuff like this, it was because of this trauma or because of that trauma or. Mm. All right. And, I see. And, 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 and I'm sorry, I can't sit there and look at somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> I go, oh, yeah, that's trauma. I can't sit there and look at somebody like, oh, oh God, what's his name mm. um, that put the thing on his head? Oh, Charles Manson. Charles Manson. The swastika, yeah. Yeah. Are, are you going to... I mean, yes, he's nutty as a fruitcake, but couldn't he just be a bad person? So, okay. Well, typically when it comes to serial killers, right, everybody just goes, oh, they're sick. Yeah. They're sick, they're, they're deranged, they're crazy, whatever. But... But there are people out there. They choose... There's businessmen out there who choose to do unethical business practices. There are politicians out there that will take the bribe. Yeah. There, I mean, these people do this stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, we don't have to search very far. No. Unless you're talking about a sociopath to know that the grand majority of people know right from wrong. Right. At least from a basic moral perspective. Yeah. You can have this conversation with most five-year-olds. So what... I think you're getting at here is that some people, they want to attribute it to something else or they want to blame the behavior on something else versus just accepting the fact that, Mm. in other words, sometimes a bully is a bully just because he can. Right. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not downgrading or, yeah, I'm just saying, why don't we see people sometimes are just this way? Well, I think it depends on how close we are to them. I think it's easier to say that someone is just, like you said, they're just a bad person. They're just shit people. (laughs) That's that's it, right? (laughs) It's easier to see that when we're removed. Right. We don't know them personally. When it's a family member, a close friend, a love interest... That's when we tend to start making excuses. See, that's the problem that gets me. Are we making excuses? Mm. Are there really problems there? Mm. Because my thought is if there's really problems there and you know there's problems there, you're going to go seek help or something to fix said problem. But these same people will sit there and not do that. But some people don't want to. No, some people don't. I mean, that's the... God's honest truth. Like some people are like, yeah, I know what I did was wrong. I don't care. This seems to be an attitude I I keep on seeing in modern day more and more. I think we're seeing it more and more because people are put under a microscope more and more, right? Like everybody's looking for somebody to fuck up. Everybody's looking to poke at what they did wrong. Which, of course, then opens up the bigger question of what's right and what's wrong. Right. And, you know, it starts in with that kind of shit. There's so many, especially comedians, right? I love I love stand up comedy for this. Oh, comedians will say all kinds of off color stuff. Oh, yeah. And most of them right now have the same attitude. They're like, cancel me. Go ahead. I don't care. What I said was funny. If you don't like it, that's your problem. But there's nothing wrong with what I said. And part of their theory is, right, it's jokes. It's just jokes. Okay. Okay, I can get that, right? A joke is not an action. No. Somebody can make a joke about something as horrible as, I don't know, pedophilia. Yeah. And, I mean, I hate to say it, in the right context, it could be very funny. But it's not, they're not doing it. They're not actually acting upon said thought. It's just a thought. Right. Well, now, what about this, like we, we've been hearing lately mm. about the people, about the free Palestine from mm. the river to the sea, which actually calls for the genocide mm. of the Jewish people. Mm. Okay. 
All right. I mean, again, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and call these people that are calling for this evil because I'm not sure if they actually know what they're saying. That's also a big, broad group. I mean, then we're then we're talking about, you know, there's much bigger things at play there. I think we're better off to stick with the individual and look at the smaller microcosm picture. But like. Because I've seen the same people do the same thing. And we we will both sit there and look at like Hitler and the Nazi party. What I did is bad. Right. This is evil. But I'm back to who who decides that. Who says that? Like, okay, so fine, Hitler. The slaughtering of hundreds of thousands of human lives. Wrong. Yes. The thought that you represent a superior race of people. It's a thought. It's a thought. It's not wrong. Hold on. Then let me give you your phrase mm. back to you. It's a choice. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. It's a choice. It's a choice. I mean, would most people probably be like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a little messed up. You maybe don't want to share that with others. But, you know, but again, is it criminal or wrong or morally? Rep- I don't know, because it's a thought. It's an idea. But again, the population mm. in, in, in Germany did not start off this way. Mm-hmm. This was a slow, methodic. But that's what I'm saying. Like, even if you wrote... Like, if Hitler was around today, I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, but if Hitler was around today, if he wrote a book and was like, I believe there's a master race of humans and they are superior and they are blue eyed and blonde, right? And he laid it all out. He'd be on CNN tonight debating this Mm -hmm. with somebody on the opposite end going, you're out of your mind. What is wrong with you? How could you say that? But if he's just going, it's just a book. It's just a theory. This is my thought process. This is what I think. If there were no action taken in relation to the idea, is it bad? Hmm. See, that's where I think traditional craft is an is interesting. We live by deeds yes by your deeds you shall be known my thoughts and my deeds are two very different things in any given day how many thoughts do you have well how many thoughts do i have that i know will never come true (laughs) also though how many thoughts do you have that you could say are controversial or negative or wrong someone else would disagree with loads Mm. I mean, come on, if we really want to get honest, I would venture to say that half of a human being's day is spent processing and and rejecting thoughts. Yes. Yeah. But We've it doesn't mean you don't have them. Don't mean you don't have them. I mean, there's a lot of times you sit here and listen to stuff and go, okay, that's just bullshit. Right. And move on. But I mean, I even see my dog wrestle with this, right? Animals will... D- d- Should I do that? I don't know. I, I, I want to eat that. Yeah. I'm going to get yelled at if I eat that, but I, but I want to eat it. <laughs> and then sometimes they go for it and sometimes they don't. But yeah, I don't see that's what's messed up. Uh, we will stand here and defend <clears throat> thoughts all day, every day. Now, then we also, though, right, have the Crowleyism of craft right do as thou will is the whole is the whole of the law right but is doing again it's doing not thinking well again and if you even change your moral structure Mm -hmm. this suddenly can come okay well this isn't as bad as i thought yeah this is so this is really interesting. So some people, yes, clearly we know this. They do something, the majority of people find it to be wrong and they don't care. They did it anyway. They're fine with it. Okay. And then you have those who know it's the majority of people are going to find it wrong or they themselves deem it wrong, which is more important. Right. And they did it, but they feel bad about it. 
or there's guilt or remorse or whatever there might be. And then, yeah, you, you have society pushing on us with a whole bunch of ideas of what's wrong in the first place. Right. So, so, so let me ask you, could we ever come up with someone? Can you think of anyone who is actually evil, like Sauron or one of the, from the history, from the, from these great stories where the guy just seems to be evil for no reason. For the sake of being evil. Evil. Um. Because I don't consider people with issues doing bad stuff as evil. This no. is just your, your thought process kind of. But see, then we also get into my personal views on nature. There are plenty of people that go, the volcano in Pompeii wiped out an entire civilization, right? Killed all of these people. And some people at the time attributed it to what? God's being angry. Right. Right. The volcano doesn't give a shit. Nope. The volcano did what volcanoes do. It had no agenda. It didn't do it with malicious intent. It just is. But people don't necessarily operate that way. So that's where it's rough. Even in the mental health community, there is a very strong belief that a mental health diagnosis is not an excuse for bad behavior. But I have also challenged that notion because I'm like, yeah, it is. Yeah, it absolutely is. Because if I'm an unmedicated schizophrenic and I go and shoot a bunch of innocent people, right? <laughs> It's an excuse for my behavior. It doesn't make it right. Well, don't you remember when it was going around? I'm on Prozac. Don't piss me off. Mm -hmm. It was an excuse. to. But that's what I'm saying. It is it is an excuse for the behavior because literally what do people say? Oh, well, he was an unmedicated schizophrenic. That's an excuse. Now, it still, we're not debating the right or wrong, oh. the morality of it. Just the act is then excused in a way it's explained if nothing else right right so that's where it gets rough because i i have dealt with that firsthand and i and i have always kind of stopped and gone yes it's one thing to say a mental the mental illness is not an excuse for bad behavior but at the same time when you talk to people who are mentally ill they will tell you all the shitty things that they did when they were unwell. Yes. And just based on the fact that there is nothing they can do to go back in time and fix it, I they have, must accept what has transpired. Because I, if they don't, it'll eat them alive. Let's see, if I had a friend mm. back in the day and he had serious... Mm -hmm. mental issues yeah. he would he would have he would have moments where he thought he was god mm -hmm. and would go drive in and sing mm. christian music everywhere sure and he would tell me about some of the stuff he would do and it's like in my head it made sense yes. it was rational it was logical it, mm -hmm. it, it 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 as is often the case exactly so in that moment if that individual is not in control of their faculties or they believe in that moment that they're not doing anything wrong, then yes, the mental illness is absolutely an excuse for that behavior. Yes. So it's kind of messed up. I've also had to wrestle with, is the behavior a result of the illness or is it just the person? That's where it gets funky. That's where it gets really messed up. Is if Can you elaborate on this yeah. a little bit more? <laughs> so I, I will because it's so fucked up. Like, okay, so if you have, if you are in a committed relationship with someone who is bipolar and that individual cheats on their partners, this is just a known pattern of behavior for that individual. Right. They are not faithful. And then they go out and cheat on you. 
which came first, the chicken or the egg? Is, <laughs> is the bipolar mm-hmm. imbalance what made them go out and have an affair? Or did they have an affair because it's literally what they do? It's just that yeah. person. Because you could have another individual also with bipolar who would go, I would never cheat on my spouse, but, but I will run naked screaming through the streets. (laughs) (laughs) You know? Well, I mean, it's again what we've argued before. Ethics is something we get from Mm -hmm. our environment. Mm -hmm. Morals is stuff that we do internally. Yes. And even in families, siblings don't always hold the same morals. Not at all. And that's what's so wild. Because, I mean, that drives me, because it, what drives me the wild and the thought is, is where you have the kids of an alcoholic, one will drink and the other one will never touch it again. Correct. You had two kids that went through mm-hmm. the same thing, but mm-hmm. yet they're handling it in two separate mm-hmm. ways. Yes. I live in that household. I know that household. Yes. My mother was an alcoholic. Her father was an alcoholic. My sister is absolutely a functioning alcoholic i am not i barely drink go figure so i mean if siblings can be that different mm-hmm. what about friends mm-hmm. well sure i mean that's and, a chasm hmm, which is funny we just talked about everybody's normal <laughs> but, but i think it comes down to like so okay in a lot of spiritual <laughs> instances people will go it's a spiritual problem This person needs God. Right. How many times have we heard you need Jesus? Right. I mean, that's a common expression down here. Because what I think they're really saying is you just need this ethical framework. Bingo. You need the teachings of this structure, this morality, right? Ethics, whatever. So you can guide you to function in society, whether it be right. The Ten Commandments, the Quran, the Old Testament, the Torah. Keep keep on keeping on. Right. There's so many of them. Yes, that's exactly what people are saying when they say that. I think the truly devout might be taking it a step further in, right. in saying, like, you need Jesus in your heart, right? Like that component. But <laughs> eh, what do pagans do? We are a little different. A little? We we get interesting on this. So the first thing we to do, I find, or that I feel like the community does, is we talk about their energy. Yes. They have bad energy. No, they just have energy. They just got energy. Same energy you have, same energy I have. It's their energy. Yes. It's the thing that keeps them alive. So they have it. I'm not disputing that. But it is not warped in some unnatural no. fashion. So then it turns to, okay, then it becomes, right, they're, they're, I mean, there's any number of of expressions here, right? They're morally bankrupt. Right. Spiritually bankrupt. Yep. More often than not, though, rather than just stop the discussion, the conversation at that person is either not well or simply a bad person. We go into, what, retaliation mode? Vengeance? No. I I kind of feel like most people do. I feel like that's where spell work and hex work suddenly becomes very dominant. Mm. I I guess it would depend if they're coming straight after you. Just because because a person's an evil person or something does not mean that they're necessarily attacking me. Mm. Agreed. But most of these distinctions that we make... We make because we've been wronged. Yes. We make because there's been something that's happened to us. So that is the funny thing, though. And like, so ruminating, right, is like a big thing. Like, I'm a ruminator. When when something happens to me, good, bad, or otherwise, I, I have to think about it and think about it and think about it and, and replay it. And how did it go down? And why did it go down that way? And could it have been different? And part of that, ironically, is craft training. Yes. Because I'm always trying to pick up the cube and look at it from every Every single single possible angle angle. and outcome and understanding what the fuck I'm getting involved in. (laughs) But (laughs) mentally, (laughs) that has not always proven to be the best game for me. 
because I can run away with those thoughts. Okay. And then it becomes unproductive. It sort of ends up doing the opposite of what you wanted it to. But the, huh, that's it. People will not just walk away. It's that simple cutoff, right? Of, I don't need that in my life. No, we make excuses. Mm -hmm. We try to fix it. We try to manipulate it. We no, we don't try to fix it. We try to cast a spell on top of it so we can put a Band-Aid on it so we can cast another spell. Correct. But in, in that person's mind, initially, they think they're fixing. They think they're fixing. It. Right. Okay. So, because we both know spells do not fix problems. <laughs> spells also do not fix personalities. Nope. This is the one that nobody likes to hear. You are not going to bind a pedophile and never have them act on those impulses again. Nope. That is why they need something else, right? Whether it be incarceration, we have, you know, sex offender lists, you know, they need to not be around kids. We can agree on that. Yes. But people think, right, I can bind, twist, bend, do. All right. I'm going to ask a difficult question, which you're mm. going to laugh at me. Mm. So what would you call evil? What is this person who is evil just for being evil? What, what, what does this look like? What do you think this would look like? I can honestly say I've never encountered it. I would have to, to me, this would have to be a person who would just want to go out and hurt and destroy things mm -hmm. just because I they can. can. Right. So and it's fun. The image that I have in my mind, it's Godzilla. Yeah. Right. It's Godzilla on a rampage. It's I'm doing this simply because I can, not because it I gain anything. I mean, even Thanos wasn't that bad. No. You know, so... I don't believe that that exists. I don't. I, I, I find it very hard for it to, but... Even all the stories of all the gods, all the deities, right, who we consider to be... Darker. Dark, yeah. yeah. The, the, the problematic ones. <laughs> there's still something there. There's still some... There's st Look... Best I ever heard. I think it was a stand-up comic. Even a serial killer loves someone. Yes. Right? I mean, for all we know, Jeffrey Dahmer loved his mommy. Yeah. There's no one is just pure, unadulterated awful. I have never seen it. I've not seen it in physical form. I've not seen it on the spiritual plane. I've not. No, I've just never seen it. But yet people seem to go around and call people this other mm -hmm. in evil mm -hmm. that we have never actually seen in the world to begin with. Because the reason that idea even exists is because it's a counterbalance, right? If we right. can have something so good and so pure and so perfect, virtuous, there has to be its opposite. But that's the point. That doesn't exist either. No. It doesn't. It just doesn't. That's one of the reasons why I have always been <laughs> a little forgiving towards the Christian God. Okay. N Jesus is a separate entity to me, right? We're right. going to put him aside for a minute. But the Christian God, sometimes he's an asshole. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's great. How is that any different from any of ours, right? It, That's it, it, very it, pagan. Yes. Sometimes God gets mad and does something or God seeks retribution or vengeance or whatever it might be and acts, quote unquote, unlovingly. Yes. Right. The counter to that was Christ, who was supposed to be effectively flawless. But yeah, we don't have. But yet he turned the tables over in the temple. Uh, I mean... He, yeah. he, he had a little bit of a hissy fit. Yeah. 
But I don't think that the devil played as active a role in the Bible until we had the Christ figure. I, I, I can see that. To balance it out. Yeah. I just, that's the one I don't, I have such a hard time accepting because I'm like, it's not, no one is all or nothing one or the other. No. Yeah. Then there's too many shades mm -hmm. of gray mm -hmm. in this. There is. Now, does it mean that we have to try to find the good in everybody? No. no. That is not your job. <laughs> it's not. It ain't. And don't feel like there's some kind of weird obligation there. You do not have to go trying to peel somebody back like an onion. To find that one good layer. No. Screw it. It's just, it's not. Think about what it's doing to you. Well, see, Lord, Lord Men told me this a long time ago. And he's just like, it is a fact of nature. There is going to be somebody out there in the world you are not going to like. Mm -hmm. And no matter what in the world you do, you're never going to get along. You're never going to mm -hmm. like each other. Mm -hmm. And it's best to go ahead and accept it and at least stay civil enough with mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. To, 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 and do the bare minimum to get by. Mm -hmm. it, it does happen. I think, ironically, people who live a relatively authentic life, to use a, a very modern phrase, depending on who you talk to, that person is either a saint or, or a sinner. sinner. Yeah. And that's kind of how you know. Because when <laughs> everybody only has the best to say, mm, yeah. <laughs> mm, there's something that they're, 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 they're not they're, seeing. They're not seeing. There's mm -hmm. some darker stuff there that. Yeah. I would much rather hear someone say, oh, they're an asshole, but they're also the most loving person you'll ever meet. Right. I'm like, that's honest. You know, then, I, I mean, can I can work with that. I mean, I could sit here and tell you very open and honest. My mother was the most lovingest woman as she could be, but she was the biggest freaking bitch. If you there you go. That, there you go. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, it's again where we're constantly striving for balance and things. It's okay to, but it, it, but it is okay to see that in someone else and make a judgment based on your life and what's important for you, whether to stay away from it or engage it. Mm -hmm. That's about it. <sighs> Man. Thanks for listening. Join us next week for another episode. Peg and Coffee Talk is brought to you by Life Temple and Seminary. Please visit us at lifetempleseminary.org for more information, as well as links to our social media. Facebook, Discord, Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. We travel down this trodden path, the maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning